Hello everyone, Boring Movie Guy, back once again, and today I want to talk about a movie that I just seen the other day. Um, it's one of those movies I've been waiting to see, it finally popped up on TCM, I put it on the DVR, recorded it, watched it a couple days later, and I was blown away by it. Uh, the movie that I'm talking about is a movie called The Swimmer from 1968 starring Burt Lancaster um, the first time I heard about this movie was on uh, Gilbert Gottfried's podcast I listened to that podcast uh, religiously uh, and he always brings this movie up because when he was on TCM as a guest programmer he got to choose four movies to you know he picked four movies that influenced him and this happened to be one of them that he chose and I I for a while have been trying to see this movie but you know no streaming services have this movie uh, it's really hard to find but finally it popped up on TCM and uh, I watched it and I thought it was fantastic man I was blown away like I can't think of a bad thing about that movie the pacing is beautiful uh, it's such an original way of telling a story um, just everything about the film was great the acting uh, the directing's great uh, but yeah uh, let me see how can I start this off I guess the plot is you know it sort of starts off uh, a guy's like swimming in a pool you find out it's not his pool it's a uh, someone that he knows pool and they haven't seen him in a while and they're just talking and there's little hints dropped that something's going on but not something that really uh, catches on until later that something weird is going on here but while he's like standing there, you know, he just got done swimming in their pool, he sort of says, okay, uh, I want to swim <laughs> in every pool that, that I encounter on my way home. So he, <laughs> so the whole rest of the movie, he's going to other people's pools, you know, jumping in, swimming getting out and then going to the next pool but each pool he goes to you learn a little bit more about him and these little hints as I said before are dropped that he might be going through a rough patch you know he might be having possibly a nervous breakdown or something and yeah you're just sitting there going where is this going <laughs> and when you finally find out where it goes it just it's just shocking man uh, but yeah Burt Lancaster he is great in this movie I mean the entire time he's just wearing a bathing suit in the whole movie and the guy is in incredible shape holy crap I don't know how old he was at this time he might have been like in his 40s or 50s but man he looked oh man the abs like god damn I wish I had a pair of abs like that <laughs> at that age but man, he really got uh, in pretty good shape for this movie. Um, uh, Joan Rivers pops up in there for a short scene. Um, I guess this was her first uh, acting role. Her, her first, uh, I don't know if it was her first uh, like anything Hollywood, but you know, she pops up in there. It's very interesting. She looks a lot different. <laughs> than what she did in her later years. I mean, she was known to have a lot of plastic surgery, so she's bound to not look the same in that she did when she was younger. So, <laughs> uh, But yeah, she had a short scene. I read somewhere that, it, that she, in her autobiography she said the scene took like six days to shoot or something like that, and there was just this little tiny bitty scene. It's like, what the hell was going on? But I did like read somewhere that Burt Lancaster and uh, the director, uh, what's his name? Uh, his name, I think, yeah, Frank Perry that was the director of this movie. And I guess him and Burt Lancaster did not get along at all. I think Burt Lancaster, he really wanted this role. And 
he actually pursued this role because I believe this was a short story. Uh, I have it down in my notes here. Uh, John Cheever, the short story by John Cheever. I guess it's only like a like a ten page short story, and somehow they got it made into a feature film. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess you know Burt Lancaster. He read the short story. He really wanted this role, and he really pursued it. And he probably had his own vision of how it should have been filmed and how it should be told the story. And probably uh, John Perry was getting in his way, so I'm guessing that they were just clashing like crazy, man. Clashing like, I don't know, uh, water and oil or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess uh, they even had to bring in Sidney Pollock, who, you know, is a great director of, like, Tootsie, and they shoot horses, don't they? Uh... Day of the Condor. <laughs> yeah, he's got. He was a great director, Sidney Pollock. But yeah, they had to even bring him in to uh, direct some of the scenes in this movie. Or he could have directed a good portion of this movie, but I mean, he, he was uncredited, so I guess he didn't direct uh, enough to get credited. But yeah, that's crazy, man, because you watch this movie, you know, you see that the direction is very good. You see that Burt Lancaster is possibly given the performance of his lifetime I even think he considered this his best work this movie and it's crazy to think that behind the scenes they were just not getting along at all man because everything just seems so perfect when you watch the film but sometimes a good clash creates a masterpiece man and they definitely did it here man yeah I was thought this movie was just fantastic I loved how I was just learning a little bit at a time a little bit at a time and you know you start off with the movie you you see the guy and you like him and and the film goes on and he gets really fucking creepy and all of a sudden you're just like oh my god I don't I don't know if I want to continue on with this uh, this guy's journey it's really getting a little cringy where we're going and I'm telling you, it's quite the journey, man. I think people out there should rediscover this film because I believe it was a box office failure. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I guess uh, the Columbia Studios didn't really have any hope in this, and I don't think they did much of a marketing job on it and didn't really get it out there. I think even like the producer didn't give a shit about this movie. I heard that, or I read that he uh, just wasn't anywhere near the set the producer <laughs> and I think even Burt Lancaster had to like give some of his own money to finish the movie I think they needed like one more day to shoot and he was willing to fork over his own money to get this movie made or to at least finish it and luckily he did that because who knows if no one ever forked that money over this movie could have possibly not got done or it just didn't have the right enough amount of scenes to make it into a great movie. Who knows? But thank God Burt Lancaster, he had such high hopes for this movie. And I think people are starting to discover it. And I hope as the years go on, more and more people will. And maybe someday it will get into that that cult status and... I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see, you know, I, this is the first, like I said the other day was the first time I watched it, and now I want this movie, man, like, if there is a Blu-ray copy of it out there, I want it, so I will definitely get on that soon, um, but yeah, I really can't think of a bad thing to say about this movie, it's just a beautiful beautiful film I think it's a masterpiece like I was just blown away about every aspect of this film I just I just can't believe that it was so hard to get made and that <laughs> the main actor and director did not get along it's crazy man I am gonna give this a perfect 10 man I know that's maybe jumping a little too high maybe I should watch it again maybe my 
opinion will drop a little bit, but I really don't think so. I think I'm going to be watching this movie for the rest of my life, like once a year, maybe even more than once a year, maybe once every two years, I don't know, but I'm going to keep coming back to this because this is quite the film, just different type of storytelling going on, um, something I really have never seen before, man, and I can't believe I never really heard of this movie until uh, I listened to Gilbert Gottfried's podcast because I was such... I've always been a huge Burt Lancaster fan, and for some reason, I guess I just, if I went on his IMDb page, I think I just skipped over it or something, or just, or I was just scanning every title, and then that one just sort of just, just, uh, you know, went up, and I didn't think anything about it, so I'm glad that I got introduced to this by uh, a podcast, that's why I like listening to podcasts, because, you know, you watch these you listen to these podcasts that are just based on a certain subject and you can learn a lot by listening to the podcast. I know a lot of people out there think they're a waste of time that oh my god, I can't sit and listen to a two hour podcast. Are you kidding? But I'm telling you, my mind is expanding the more I listen to podcasts. I like hearing about old Hollywood and uh, when I hear it coming from someone's actual you know, mouth about some of these stories that I hear, it makes everything just more real, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, you hear about these legendary stories and you can't believe them, uh, but yeah, when it comes from someone's mouth, you can sort of believe it, <laughs> but yeah, uh, The Swimmer, I think this is a masterpiece, and I hope more people will start discovering this movie because I think it's just whew, it, it's it's a ride man that movie was a ride I loved it <laughs>